you are learning power bi and you want to learn advanced concepts you want to know how to apply the concept you have learned as a beginner in power bi then this is the series for you so watch this complete series know how various concepts can be applied to achieve different different results subscribe to the channel in this video we would like to know the configuration which we want to do for databricks so let's go to first of all um, the microsoft documentation and understand what is you know this databricks in azure so uh, azure databricks is a data analytics platform optimized for microsoft azure cloud services uh, platform azure databricks offer three environment for development data intensive application uh, databricks sql data brick data science and engineering and databricks machine learning then databricks sql provide an easy to use platform for analysis analyst who want to run sql on their data lake create multiple visualizations type to explore query results from different perspectives and build and share dashboard now databricks has a connector for power bi so we can connect databricks to power bi and can do our analysis so what we will do today is we are going to learn first of all how can we create a azure databricks connection and i have a free account uh, where i'm going to do that and please remember after i have the class i actually go ahead and delete uh, anything which is a paid version so if you are a you know a channel subscriber you might have seen we have done something on azure sql so i have gone went ahead and delete those instances now for azure databricks i'm going to create it and it's going to uh, incur some cost when we run the machines so i'm going to go ahead and delete it after the class but the, th the thing which you see that like you know uh, i already have here um, a storage account where i stored my data uh, which uh, i have already uh, shown on my channel in the uh, when we connect with the um, data lake so um, gen2 storage uh, that i have a video on that so in that video i've shown you how to we store it and that's the same storage i will try to configure on databricks so i'll try to use the gen2 storage into the databricks and then i would uh, you know like to access that so let's begin let's begin by creating azure databricks okay create azure databricks service the free trial the resource group i'm going to use the existing resource group and then workspace name i'll let me give you it demo amit ws I'll keep rest of the things as default, uh, standard up, or I can use this one, or oh, let's use standard. Then deploy as a secure cluster, I, no fixed IP, no public IP. Let's keep it like this. Deploy a Databricks workspace in own virtual network. Let's say no advanced enable infrastructure but no tags no review and create and we say validation done successfully and now we are getting a create button and it's going to take a little bit of time for creating this one so let's see this tip is getting submitted now you will we are redirected to another screen and again here deployment is in progress and you will see as the deployment progress we will get uh, rows here uh, of azure databricks deployment see i'll pause the video here and once everything is loaded then i'll um, start it again so um our uh, deployment is completed and it is giving us button to go to resource let's click on that and now we can see uh, our uh, demo amit workspace where we have this azure databricks workspace created you can see the url you can see the subscription type and few other details and the documentation and access management control detail etc now next thing which i'm going to do is i'm going to say launch workspace I was going to open a separate window. Again, going to ask for my login. Uh, 
and now it is opening the data break and instead of you know uh, what's your current project data project and all those i'm going to skip there is no cluster right now created and it's showing you know create a cluster so i'll directly jump onto that step and i say create cluster now here when i'm creating the cluster i am i need to create a single uh, uh, cluster because single node cluster because if i try to create a multi node cluster i i uh, need to have you know that much um, you know amount available and all those so it can create a problem so i'm going to create the smallest one single node cluster so uh, let's see is there a, uh, i think d3 v2 should be the smallest one i think v2 is also there which is uh, which is actually 28 gb yes so d3 v2 is the smallest one 4 core 14 gb that's what we are going to do we are not going to uh, add key or tags uh, here we'll keep everything rest the same and we'll say create cluster again this is going to take a little bit of time so you have to wait for it to create the cluster uh so it cluster has created um, and it take a little bit of time now let's look at some of the details which we'll be needing for this cluster so uh so you go down you see this advanced option in, in this advanced option uh you have these spark details which are there and there is no init script right now if needed we can add that but the most important thing is this uh, jdbc odbc because here you are getting this server host name and http path this is what you are going to use in power bi so we are done with creating of our cluster so cluster is ready and the next step is to create a notebook and in this notebook with the help of this notebook what we are going to do is we are going to create a database and a table and that table is one which is mapped with our storage account so we in the storage account we already have our four tables which we had and we can connect one of them just for a sample right now and we can use that so what we are going to do is first let's create a notebook and i'm going to create a sql notebook but you have an option for python scala sql and r all four languages we have the option and let me call it as test notebook and i'm going to create it in sql i have a sql code which i'll share in the comments and if i go here workspace user i i i i'm now able to see the workbook otherwise i can actually go here workspace user and i can find out my uh notebook okay so now let's get the script so let me quickly get the script this is the script i already have okay so i'll explain you the script so we are saying create database test then create table test this database name and sales the table name order number int order item id int sales date string int city id int quantity int price int cogs int and discount percentage is int and these are the detail of my uh, workspace and the azure token i have which i am getting it into here okay so sales the csv uh, if we go back here if i go back to my home i go back to my storage account there i'll get my csv details so you have we have access key already here okay so these are our access key details and you can go to tables and files and look at that so let's go to storage browser and inside the storage browser let's go to blob containers and inside the blob containers let's go to demo amit and we will be able to see all the four files and you can find the details about a particular file here okay so this is the url and this is the same thing which we are using here okay so i got the url i got the token file format and then uh, format options we got and the copy options okay we select all these and we run this
and the spark job started. And I can stop the execution in between, but I want, but let it complete. See, we can open here and see the details. Okay. And the table has been created. We have 30,000 rows that with the table has been created with 30,000 rows. So this is how you create your table in Azure Databricks. Now what we have to do is we have to go to Power BI and configure this. I have started the Power BI and now I would like to connect to Azure Databricks. So I click on the get data under the home tab and I click on more to get to the option of Azure Databricks. And there I search for Databricks and I'll use Azure Databricks here and I say connect. Now when you connect, it will ask you server host name and HTTP path. I told you already, but let's have a look. You need to go to the cluster details, scroll little bit down in the JDBC, ODBC details. You will get the server name, which you need to give here. And then you will also get the HTTP path, which you need to give here. Now I have two options, import and direct query. Let me first choose the direct query is giving some, please specify the server host name. Okay, let me copy paste it again. I entered again and it just started working. I just removed it and then it let me again try direct query. And then it is asking for username and password and I have to use Azure Active Directory or personal token authentication. I'm going to use this Azure Active Directory. Sign in, it will open a pop-up. It opened a pop-up and I'm able to log in using that. And let me say connect now. And I have to go to Hive Metadata test is my database which I created there you can see it's appearing as a folder out here and then I use sales now dip, the performance of this is entirely dependent on what kind of cluster you have taken okay let me load it and what you are going to do is we are going to quickly look into some data analysis and check it out Let's look at it. Let's uh, do certain changes. Now we are indexed, so most probably we should be able to make it as a date. Now direct query, you have certain limitations, but let's do certain changes. And order number, let me say, don't summarize. So let me say order number. quantity first time it may take a little bit of time to load we got it now quantity is sum or not yes it is sum and then we can drag price also and let me create a quick measure out here which is nothing but my gross amount major which is nothing but sum x sales price into quantity and then we use this major here We got the data. Okay. Now let's do quickly. Let's import the table again. Let's this time in the import mode. So we go to the get data or oh, let's see, do we see, no, let's go to the date data more. 
data breaks as your data breaks connect again let's give the detail quickly and this time i'll say import all things are fine press ok hi my test store test and then i select this table and i say load and you see this time it loaded a little bit faster there because things are in memory and the now the time taken would be just between the communication between the two things data is not so huge so we got all the 30,000 rows and if I go to the data layer you can differentiate between the two see I can see the data of this table not of the other table that's direct query so let's quickly create a page here and now same thing I'm going to do here I'm going to make it as a date okay and then I'm going to again make it order number as don't summarize quickly bring in order number here now you can see the performance difference we have a very small instance there price quantity and let's bring in our major quickly bring in our major gross I'll only call gross AMT sum X sales to price now let's little bit carefulness is required required price into sales to quantity and it got created there and now this is how things work in power bi where you clicked now you can see the same amount 9970883 and we are going to get the same amount also here 9970883 so this is how you create a databricks environment and use it so we are done with the learning of this one and uh, because i'm on a free account i would like to show that i'm going to terminate this and it's going to take a little bit of time and i'm going to make sure that it get terminated and after that i'm going to delete the cluster as well as i'm going to go and, and delete the uh, my azure uh, databricks uh, which i created in my portal so i'm going to delete that so now i have stopped the cluster okay i can go back here and click on the um, compute and i can see my cluster here and in my cluster here on the three dots when i sc scroll right hand side i see a delete option and i say delete and it's saying deleted cluster the cluster has been deleted let's see do we have any thing else left out in the workspace we have this test and we'll say move to thrash confirm and move to thrash we go here in the thrash and we say empty thrash so i have, I have done the empty thrash also and let's go back to azure portal and go back to the home of azure portal we see this resource we click on this resource azure databricks resource and we have a delete button here and i'm deleting now so go ahead and try that out do let me know what else you want me to cover in this particular series thanks for watching this video thank you keep watching keep asking questions in comments subscribe to my channel and press the bell icon so that you can get notification for new videos thank you